control from Trollok. Deep inside a forest in Denmark, there was a hillock with brushwood on the top and surrounded all around by old oak trees. Here lived a troll pup and his wife and their little son called Troll. Troll pup himself had built the Trollok and up around the chimney bushes were planted so no humans could see that they were living there. The door as well wasn't easy to find because it wasn't much bigger than a mouse hole. Inside the door there was a little rock and when they hit the rock one time they became very small so they could easily run through the hole. Outside the door there was another rock which they hit two times and then they became big again. Oh yes, they were jolly happy for their home where no one could bother them and every time they went outside they just put a white magic stick in the mouth and then they became invisible and therefore no one ever got to see them. Unfortunately, Troll was bad at making pranks when he felt bored. <laughs> One time he had in the same morning been hiding his mother's glasses in the wood chest and later on putting small firecrackers into his father's pipe. So it wasn't so strange that he got yelled at and had to be taught a lesson. But the worst lesson for him was when the white magic invisible stick was taken away from him now I'm keeping this with me for the next two weeks. Then maybe you'll learn how to behave. And then that was that. Imagine to stay inside the house for two weeks. Troll felt so bad, cause it couldn't matter to stroll around in the forest without his invisible stick. The fox could catch him. No, he nicely had to stay inside, which he did the first week. But then he couldn't take it anymore. And one day he took a chance and snuck out without Troll Pup and Troll Ma seeing it. Carefully he tiptoed on his way under the most tight bushes. It was wonderful again to move freely. The sun was shining, the birds were singing and hundreds of insects were buzzing all around him. And for every step he took, a whole swarm of grasshoppers were jumping all around him. Suddenly he remembered the bird nest that he had found near the big rock some time ago. Hmm. Troll started to crawl slowly towards the bird nest. But that was a really bad mistake, because at the same time a flock of crows came flying, and they see everything. And with screams and scrams they rushed down on him, and Troll got very scared and he ran as fast as he could and grabbed a long stick that he swung over his head while he was steering towards a ditch which was fully covered by thorn scrub. The crows were right on top of him, but he managed to escape down in the ditch and was hiding inside a hollow tree. For a long time the crows kept flying around, but Troll sat perfectly still until they left. As the last crow disappeared over the treetops, he dared himself to come out. But it was a real bad day for Troll, cause right as he was rushing towards the hillock, he bumped right into Mikkel the fox. <coughs> Fortunately the fox wasn't hungry, cause then it would have been all over for Troll. No, Mikkel had already eaten a nice delicious chicken who had got a bit too far away from the farm that it belonged to. And now Mikkel was up for messing around. He picked up Troll by his neck and ran off with him. Then he stopped, rolled him, but gave him the chance to run away for a bit, then snatched him once again, shook him a bit and had a jolly good time. Troll was fully sure that it was the last of him. But then he noticed that they were very close to the hillock. And from the ground he suddenly grabbed a wooden stick and stabbed the stick into the fox. And with a big yell Mikkel released him and Troll ran as fast as he could towards the door and disappeared through the hole. Mikkel sniffed around for a bit and then he ran home. Troll stayed inside for the rest of the day. Nobody had noticed that he had been outside, but he didn't tell anyone about what happened. The next day, as Troll's father and mother was having their nap, Troll went outside again. 
He was careful and kept him safe all the time under the thick black thorn near the chimney. He was playing around with the grasshopper, and while he sat and played with it, he suddenly heard something cheeping next to him. No, look, it was a bird nest. Then there would probably be young birds in it. And carefully he leaned towards it, and fully right, four naked young birds put up their hungry beaks. It looked funny. Please don't hurt my children, a frightened voice chipped right over his head. How could you even think about building your nest right at our chimney? He didn't have any intentions of hurting anyone, but he found it funny to tease the bird a bit. Actually, he was pretty bad at teasing. I thought it wouldn't bother anyone, and the blackthorn is so comfortable thick. Troll didn't reply. I, I'll, I'll help you with something, the bird continued. What could a little thing like you do, Troll said. The only thing I need is an invisible stick, because my daddy has taken mine, and of course such a thing would have been possible for you to get. Incorrect, because that's exactly what I can get, because I've seen the place where your daddy finds them. If that's true, then I won't tell a soul about your nest. Then follow me. It's not that far away. The bird flew ahead but enough for Troll to carefully follow it without being seen by the fox and crows. Here it is! The bird landed in a strange little shrub, placed next to the water. It had red bark and big white flowers. Are you sure this is the right one? Troll had already a little sharp stone and sliced off a little twig. One, two, three, and it was carved and scraped nicely white and then into the mouth. The bird squeed a little frightened chip when Troll vanished. You see that I was right. But to be fully sure that it worked, Troll sneaked towards the bird so he easily could grab it. And it flapped scarily with its wings, but Troll said, I just wanted to see if the stick worked. Thanks a lot. I'll help you some other time if you need it. Now fly away. The bird flew happily back home to her nest. And Troll was happy as well. He jumped and sprang down along the path. Once again, he'd feel like the king of the forest. Troll strove all for long at the brooklet, and soon he saw the three tall oak trees. He knew Mikkel was living around this area, so now it was simply about finding the entrance. There it was, right under a tree root. Troll sat in the sand in front of the hole and looked over his shoulders and sneaked inside the hole. Oh, it was so dark, but he had to get down there and stop the fox from hunting him again. He started walking into the dark. In the beginning, he had to feel with his hands, but trolls have good eyes, so after a while he saw perfectly everything around him. Now he could hear someone snoring. The passage became wider, and soon he found himself standing in the actual cave. There he was, Mikkel the fox and his wife sleeping next to each other. And a bit away you had the four kids snoring like it was a competition. Troll snuck towards Mikkel the fox and pulled his tail. And he jumped up with a bark and started yelling out. Fox mother woke up and said that she really hadn't touched him. You have probably been dreaming. Please don't wake up the kids. Mikkel was growling irritated and went back to sleep. Now Troll picked up a handful of sand and lingered it into the ear of Troll. And she jumped up and yelling and scolding much worse than Mikkel before. Be quiet, Mikkel said drowsy. You have also been dreaming. Now let's get some silence here. I need to get my sleep before going hunting tonight. Troll Mother shook the sand out of her ear, and soon after they slept again. Now Troll took out a long piece of string, which his mama had spun out of wool. Carefully he tied together the tails of the kids. Then he led the string towards Mikkel and his wife. Their tails also got tied together with the string, and the free end he tied to a solid root. 
Then he walked over to the two adults and pulled both their tails. They jumped up at the same time with such a rush that all the kids were pulled along the ground and they all started howling and whining. Mikkel stared furiously at his wife and she stared just as angry at him. Now they realized that it could not have been a dream. They both had experienced the same annoyance. Suddenly Troll took the white invisible stick out of his mouth. The fox stared amazed at him and then each other to make sure it was real. And then they sprang to catch him but the string held and they fell down to the ground and tumbled around each other. <laughs> Troll laughed so much that he had to sit down. Now can you learn how to behave and stop hunting me? Or else it will get much worse next time I'll be back, Troll said to Miggle the fox. And Miggle growled angry and gnawing on the string to get loose. But the string was solid. And before he got free, Troll was already on his way out of the fox cave. But within short time, he realized that he had got lost in the many underground passages. And now he could hear the foxes roaming around. They probably had freed themselves. Oh, it was so good that he had his invisible stick. Now he just hoped that they could not sniff their way to his whereabouts. Now they came. Troll squeezed himself flat to the wall. They were very close now. He still might be down here. Go and sit by the main entrance. Then the fox can block the other entrances. Don't worry, we'll catch him. Fox mother came walking right beside and passing Troll. He was not afraid. So he started sneaking slowly behind Fox mother. And soon he could see the sunlight coming in. Fox mama sat down. And Miggle came sniffingly closer to Troll. Who, who took in courage and ran as fast as he could out of the cave, passing Fox Mama. And Miggle was right behind Troll with his nose down to the ground, because he could follow Troll with his good sense of smell. Miggle was catching up on him, so there was nothing else to do. He had to get up in a tree. He jumped up in the first tree he saw, and Miggle stopped and realized that Troll was up there. Soon after, Fox Mama came, and they agreed to guard the tree until he would come down. Troll didn't find it so amusing anymore. He should have actually been home by now at this time, before his parents would wake up from their afternoon nap. Suddenly, he spotted a big beehive hanging on a thin branch. Hmm, maybe they could help him. Carefully, he started crawling up, and he took his sharp stone and began cutting the branch that carried the beehive. Of course, the branch was shaking a bit when he was cutting it, and the bees started to buzz louder. There, now it was enough. And as fast he swung the beehive down to the foxes while he was yelling to them, a little gift from me. And the bees attacked them both, and they screamed and jumped in all directions. Most of the bees followed Mikkel the fox, and he did not stop running before he could head dive deep into a forest lake and disappear under the water. But every time he stuck his nose up over the water surface, the bees stang his sore nose. See, maybe Mikkel the fox was a slob, but he was cunning. He thought of sticking his nose up under a water lily leaf, and soon after they flew away. Miggle also hurried up back to the cave, where they were licking each other's sore noses. During all of this spectacle, Troll had made it back home, and he reached to get in door just in the last second before Troll Pop came yawning out of the bedroom. Oh, look how nicely he plays with his things, and not a single time has he disturbed us. I sure hope it will last, Troll Pop growled. He was never fully relaxed when Troll was behaving too nicely. Ah, yes, he's really been good these last couple of days. And here tonight, my little guy, you can be alone in the house. Your father and I are going to visit your grandfather in Norway, so you don't need to be scared, and we will be back early. But I'm not scared at all, Troll said, and the whole afternoon he was playing inside. In the evening when they had to leave, Troll Pop took his wife under the arm and swung a black stick, and whoop, then they were gone. 
As soon as they were gone, Troll came out of the hillock, and quick he found the big tall trees where the crows always go to sleep at night time. The birds hadn't gone to sleep yet. They fought as usual over the best spots for sleeping. Troll went over to the tree where most of them were sitting and started walking up. The crows didn't feel anything and most of them were already sleeping. Troll got himself comfortable in a big branch when he came up, with crows sitting all around him. <laughs> he could imitate the big horn owl, and all the crows flew up with scroll and corn. They thought it was their worst enemy, and they were so tired and sleepy that many of them flew right into the trees. He wanted to have a couple of words with the crows, so soon he was up in the new tree. Troll came climbing up in the tree just in time to hear what Krikra, the leader of the crows, was saying. Now we need to watch out. You two must be guarding, and as soon as you hear something, you must wake up all of us. Krikra has spoken, now get to it. The two selected crows silently complained as they were very tired, but they flew up to a branch higher up in the tree and tried to look awakened. The other crows fell to sleep immediately. Troll was hanging right under the branch where the two crows were guarding. He took out the string and carefully tied it on each of their legs. The end part of the string he tied to the branch. Then he let himself fall all the way down to the branch where all the other crows were sitting. Krikra immediately flew up to the two guarding crows. How in the world is it that you two are guarding the tree? But when he saw the two crows flapping around in the string, he forgot to yell at them in amazement. Then Troll took the invisible stick out of his mouth, and everyone could see him clearly. Now pay attention. All of your scream next. This is Troll talking to you. I'm the one you hunted yesterday. But if you ever do that again, then I will come and tie all of you to the trees. Was it also you who screamed like the big horn owl? Yes, it was me. But you have more reason to worry about me. And suddenly Troll disappeared in front of them. And a moment later he stood right in front of Krikra, who got a really big shock. We will never hunt you again, I swear. But please, can you free those two from the string? Sure I will. And after that, I want a crow to fly me home. The two were released from the string, and Troll was flown home on the back of one of the crows. Troll went inside and crawled up in his bed, and it was just the right moment he got his blanket up, because at the same time, Troll Pop had borrowed a binoculars to check up on Troll. And when he saw Troll laying there in his bed, he decided the next day to give back his white invisible stick, which was great. But now Troll knew where he always could get a new invisible stick, if he ever needed an extra one.